So basically everything below that top ring on two and three is still good. The rest of the piston's good too, but I just do not like excessive clearances like that on a top ring on a compression ignition engine. That is not good at all. So what do we do? We'll see if we can find some more pistons. I'm gonna have to stumble around in the dark. Okay, give you guys a rundown on what's happening here. This is one of my sheds where I keep a lot of my treasures squirreled away. Um, lots of stuff in here in crates and boxes sitting on shelves. Um, you can see all kinds of crates I've built. That's uh, about two or three deep in there, stacked about three high. Most of that stuff's all labeled. This is um, from parts machines, uh, things I've picked up at swap meets, dismantled units, anything that's still good and potentially usable for any of my projects is crated up in here. This is one of the places. A lot of oil on that shelf. We got like cat bolts, miscellaneous hardware up here. Um, we got some D4400 stuff there. Radiator side panels, Cat 4200G, gas engine parts up there, manifolds. Got on this side, more big crates. There's crankshafts in here. Like I say, 8A331 clutch disc pressure plate. That's uh, out of one of the graders. Farmall H ring gear right there. Alamite grease pumps, sickle mower stuff. D6 stuff, gauge panels, farm all stuff. Anyway, I've got some D3400 pistons in here. I believe. Got some miscellaneous grill stuff here, manifolds, some clutch stuff for graders, more manifolds up there. We have sheet metal side panels, toolboxes, fenders, lots of good stuff up there. I believe I need to dig into this side though. I think the pistons are in here somewhere. So well, let's just see what we can find. I know it's dark, guys, so please bear with me. Oh, that's heavy. What we got here? Push rods. They're not in here. Get this one out of the way. This is some. D2, D4, starting pinion parts, sleeves, gears, levers, clutch pieces, I think. I need to get into this, this crate here. Make sure this is where they are. What we got? Yep, this is D3400 stuff. I think I found them. Okay, everybody, it's the following day, and I've had some time to clean and evaluate the condition of the pistons that I found in the parts crate last night, and I'm liking what I'm seeing. I'll show them to you right here. These are the ones. I have them separated into two pairs. There's a reason for that that I will get into in just a second. But these pistons are probably the most perfect match that I could ever ask for to what came out of 1113's original engine. Aside from these have some excellent ring lands all around. I'm just really, really happy with what I found here. No grooves, no steps, no appreciable wear. They even have a lot less scuffing above that top ring, which is much more in line with what I would expect to see on a piston that is otherwise in as good condition of this. We have the same 2000s clearance on the piston pin inside the piston, just like those. Uh, well within spec yet. I'm, I'm really, really happy that I found these. I cannot believe that these are as close of a match to the good pistons that come out of 1113 as what they are. Got very lucky right there. So we have options now. Um, for the reason why I have these pistons paired separately, basically, they're two different styles of pistons. We'll start with these here on the end. They are 7B1981s. You can see the number inside the skirt there. Same as the 1113 originals, 7B1981. Screw top design, steel top ring land, the same in every way as what came out of 1113. These other two have a different number, 1H1692, and I call these unicorns because I can never, ever, ever find these. 
Um, this is not a screw top design. This is a one piece piston. This is the latest, greatest, last and best piston the cat ever made for the D3400 to three and three quarter inch bore. Steel top ring land cast into the aluminum body. They cannot come apart. They cannot unscrew. They cannot do any of the bad things that the old multi-piece pistons are notorious for. My problem is I only have two of these. Um, I was out here the other night with my scale, which is a very sensitive scale, and I was weighing every piston on this bench. Both styles, anything here that did not have rings on it, every one of these pistons was three pounds right on the dot. Um, to further check, I put a piston pin, half in this piston, half in that one, to line them up, get them centered to one another, and they were just as you see on the bench here. Exact same height, exact same weight, and the top ring lands line up with one another, but on the new one, newer one-piece piston, all the uh, following ring lands are about a 32nd of an inch lower than what's on the multi-piece ones. That's really the only difference I can see. Now, these four pistons came out of tractor number 5J9323. That was a D2 that was built right up near the end of the J-series production. And I have to believe it was running just fine with those two different styles of piston. Um, if everything's balanced, I don't think there was even a problem. Now, the only backstory I have on the 5J9323 engine that these pistons came out of was that it had ran with low oil or no oil at one point in time. The engine had incurred some damage because of that. Um, the engine was removed from its chassis, somehow found its way to a scrap yard. I rescued it from the scrap yard, took a $100 gamble on it, brought it home, tore it down, found some good parts in it, crated up the decent pieces, stored them away in the shed, and years later it brings us to where we are today. So that's why you see some scuffing on the thrust surfaces of the skirt on this piston. Honestly, they look worse than they actually are. I emeried those things down with some fine, fine paper. You can barely even feel them with your fingernail right now. Those, uh, those scuffs on this piston in this engine don't bother me one bit. The other 1981 piston actually fared pretty well. Now, the one-piece pistons, they actually suffered the most damage. You see a lot more scuffing on the thrust sides of the skirt on that one. This one came out of number four hole and it was by far the worst. You can see some pretty good scuffs that was starting to pull material. So I would love to use these single piece pistons, but just the scuffing alone on those pretty much discounts them. So we're going with these two right here. Granted, they are still the screw tops, the multi-piece ones, but I'm still gonna have an absolute match set of 1981 pistons so I think these are gonna be my replacements right here. So final real check that I did of the two possible replacements were measurements to the skirt. Um, just wanted to make sure what my piston diameters were. I also wanted to compare them with pistons that I plan on using also in 1113, number one and number four, the two good ones. So uh, if you know how to read a micrometer, you can see I've got this one set at 3.743 right now. And we'll look at, I was most concerned with this one that has the noticeable scuffing on it. It is a pretty good fit. You have to center that thing just right to get it to slide through. That is 3.743 right on the dot. And these are not cam ground pistons. They're not barrel shaped. They're not anything special. We're talking 1930s low tech here. These are just aluminum slugs full-bodied skirt design, full circumference, and they're just uh, meant to seal a cylinder with some rings and pump up and down. Nothing fancy about these things. Compare that with an 1113 original. You can see we are running 3.742, 3.743 on all of these piston skirts, and they all measure the same any which way you go around them. They are absolutely round. So, with that little bit of information in mind, it doesn't bother me one bit using these two pistons. Next step now is we load these final two pistons with rings. And on the upper compression ring, we have to make note of the word top that is on there. This is also the one that has that rather scarf cut overlapping joint in it. The top word must face up. Just like that. 
And with that, we finally have four pistons all loaded up with rings, and we're coming back to the spec sheet one more time because I want to show you guys what changed. If you remember back from the last video, two and three were the horribly worn pistons, and I had the horrendous 14 to 25,000 side clearance on the top compressed ring on number two. Bear in mind, 10 thousandths of an inch side clearance is maximum allowable spec for any of these ring positions. The replacement piston brought me down to a very respectable 5 thousandths, really liking that. Number three was the 10 to 15. That also brought me down to 5 thousandths with that new piston. Now the other rings all changed somewhat, but not to a large degree. I was already running 2 thousandths side clearance on two and three compression rings on number two. That is still the same on the replacement piston. And then all these other compression rings and oil controls were all one and a half thousandths. They're all two thousandths with these two new pistons. Still well within spec, and we're looking pretty consistent for wear on those two. They are very, very well matched to one another. And everything I'm seeing here now makes me feel really good. And last thing I want to mention from when we miked the skirts on these pistons, uh, we're just going to calculate what our clearance inside our cylinder liner is. And now Cat really never got that worried about piston skirt to cylinder liner clearance. They don't even give you a spec for how loose the pistons can be in the liner. The closest thing they give you is maximum permissible liner wear at top of ring travel where it would be the most profound, 15 thousandths of an inch. So when your liner wears more than 15 thousandths of an inch at the end of the ring travel or the top of the ring travel, it's out of spec and you basically renew the liner. So considering we have a new diameter of 3.750, 3.751, that's basically three and three quarters. And we take the 3.74243 diameter of the pistons, we're running a seven to eight thousandths piston to liner clearance. And honestly, that's well within our max 15. And if you consider a liner has worn to 15 thousandths overbore anyway, You've also incurred some wear on your piston, so that's further going to add to that 15 thousandths of an inch clearance. So basically, we're about as close to new spec as what you can get in this day and age. Now, the last two videos, <laughs> I know it's been a lot of me talking, it's been a lot of boring specs and measurements and, th and things like that, and trying to reuse pistons. And in the real world, reusing pistons is a major, major no-no. But this is 2019, we essentially have zero parts supply for these pistons anymore. All things considered, I'm feeling pretty good about it. Um, this is the absolute best I can do in this day and age with no access to brand new parts or virtually no access. So, you know, reusing pistons, it's not something I usually do. In this case, I had no other choice, but really, I'm 95% to being at brand new clearance spec with everything here, and I'm actually shocked that it ended up turning out that way. Now I know all these clearances, measurements, specifications, what have you can get pretty dull and boring, but it's really all steps that you have to carry out if you're going to know what you're putting together, especially when you're mixing a hodgepodge collection of used parts like I'm doing here. Um, if you've made it this far through this video and the last one and you haven't clicked away yet, you're probably screaming at me by now, just stop talking already and put something together. Well, guess what? Package showed up in the mail today. The new old stock piston pins should be in here so I can finally finish this phase of the project. And if you're thinking it looks like a rather large box just for four piston pins, you are correct. There are a lot of other new old stock goodies in here and I can't wait to get them all out and on the bench next time.